Hello everyone. Tonight I'm going to tie two flies and they're like rather similar. One is a Macau parrot with CDC legs nymph and the other one is uh, more or less classic pheasant tail soft hackle. And I'm going to talk about a couple of things. First, why I choose soft hackle of uh, partridge over the CDC or vice versa. So which one I prefer, when and why. And the second thing I'm going to discuss is quantity of materials when you dub it. And third, I'm going to go out of my comfort zone and I'll start uh, using my rotational function of the vise. Well, I guess that's why I bought it in the first place. Uh, I'm inspired by that because of one of the viewers asked me like why I don't use it as often or at all, actually. So let's start tying out of the comfort zone. So first of all, I'm starting with a jig hook size 12, 3.5 millimeter bead. Uh, this is a disco ball bead, as you can see. I found a couple of them in a box and I just want to use them because I don't have many left. So it makes sense. I don't think this is be any better than just regular slotted uh, silver bead. I prefer silver over gold, for example. So I'm going to start with a UTC thread 70 denier. And because I need some space for the hackle, I'm going to just start right behind the bead a little bit. And that's exactly the place where I want my body to end. So I have enough space for the, for the hackle. Now, before I add anything else, I'm going to add white wire. It's going to contrast uh, the pheasant tail. And it's going to complement this color a little bit because it's it, it nice contrast there. It creates nice segmentation over there. And I think it looks good. Uh, I, I have never tested whether it gets more fish or not. Now for the body, I'm going to align a couple of pheasant tail tips. Barbules and I'm going to use them. Uh, usually for the size of the hook like this, I'm going to use probably five or six. And with two turns, I'm going to lock this in place. And in this case, the tail is a little bit too long, in my opinion. So I'm going to just pull it slightly and then tighten more the body. And then I just go uh, with my thread towards the end of the body. And now the, it starts the, the, the rotational thing. When I get here, I found out that I prefer to do a couple of completely useless reps at first sight, but as I rotate in the opposite direction than the thread, this thread is actually going to unwind. Uh, so if I just finished here, the thread would go backwards. But because I do a couple of extra reps here, as I wind on the, the, the body, this one is will wind up. So it's going the opposite way, of course. So as I finish the pheasant, the thread is going to wait for me exactly what I wanted. And then I just transfer my hands and with, as you can see, two, uh, two turns, I lock the, 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 the pheasant there. And then I'm going to wind the, the wire. The wire I prefer to do by hands because I this, this is just what I used to. I'm not going out of my comfort zone now for this, for this one, but I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. That's what I do usually. Now, catch it, break it. That's more or less it. Now, it's important how you choose your feather. Now, you have a partridge, you have black and white feathers. That's what people usually use. But I prefer to use this darker ones. Now, if you go down the bird, you'll find out that the feather have those longer barbules. If you go up the neck, the feather gets smaller in size and you get to use a better feather. So I'm going to just find one of these. So I need a smaller feather, of course. It's not as brown as down, but it's still less uh, 
less white, let's call it like that. As you will notice, it has like a very fine stem, which will actually help me with dyeing. I spin the thread in one direction and I catch the, the, the partridge feather like this. The reason I spun the thread was to the, make a round profile of the thread so it could go into the stem. It will catch it more strong. And now I need my hackle pliers. Hackle pliers, you need to use them with caution because this feather is very thin. I mean, the stem you saw is very thin here. Imagine how thin is uh, at the tip of the feather. What I like to do is I go with my thread behind and then just wrap a couple of times. And then I just rest the hackle pliers down and then I spin the thread because it unspun in the meanwhile. I spin it to get the round shape again because flat thread will uh, have difficulties going through those fibers. Now I go with two turns like this and then I just go with my thread one turn around the, the tip of the feather and then I break it off. And as you can see, everything is where it's supposed to be. Now, one more here. And now, when it comes to dubbing, I use Pico dubbing, artificial one, of course. Let me just, I have a corner cut out, so I just do this and I pick out. And I look at the quantity of this. It's like three fibers, literally. Put it against your thread, spin it once, and you get like super nice thin rope. So you can do actually longer noodle than if you had thicker dubbing noodle. Uh, what this means is that you can control your dubbing much better, the thickness of your uh, thorax part, and you can like, it's much better to control and the dubbing will stay on the rope much better than if the noodle was thicker one. Now I can control, as you can see, it's like very thin, but I'll add more turns and more turns and more turns if I need. And I'll just add a, a little bit more dubbing. So by adding more dubbing, I'm actually controlling the angle of those legs. Uh, you can do it in Carl style, like 90 degrees or even pointing uh, forward. Uh, just I like to do it more traditional way, to be honest, even though it's going to make it less wobbling the water. Because if the wa this, these legs were towards the front, the, they would act, the, the current will actually push them back and they would fight the current and they would move. So that's that's the reason why they would actually be more more mobile. Now I'll do two whip finish knot and this we're finished with this fly as you can see. It's a very easy fly and this is one of the flies that will catch your fish well anywhere where fish are actually eating insects in the water. So this is the first one. Uh, I'll do the CDC one now and then I will compare them for you. Now I'll do the same hook, same thread, everything is the same except materials for the fly, of course. So let's go with a different wire first. So I'll do the same thing again. I'll push the bead, go almost to the bead. Now I don't need as much space because I'll do the different technique. And these techniques that I'm going to use for the legs are actually interchangeable, like you can do it with both things. Um, I'll put my silver wire here. It's a thin one. I don't have any thicker one, so I'm using what I get. And I just go along the hook shank in touching turns. I'm having making a smooth underbody here. And now I'll just, well, I'll go a little bit backwards and I'll tell you why. I'm gonna attach tail. I forgot about tail completely. So for the tail, I'm using Coctelion. You can use hair mask, fur, or anything you like. I like Coctelion, and it's just next to me. So I'll go backwards, touching turns again. I'm creating smooth underbody. It helps helps me uh, wind on the material for the body in the next step. So you're making a taper as well. That's why I, I started winding the, catching the, the cochlea here and not here because 
I want my tailing, well, end part of the fly to be very thin. Now, when I get to the end of the hook, I stop there, I choose Macau feather, I take a couple of fibers, like two or three, pull them out. Now, catch your Macau feather where you want it, like this, and just go to the front. Now, this feather, these barbules actually are not too long, so you have to do it in touching turns, don't overlap too much, at least not at this size of the hook. I will do the same thing as I did with the pheasant tail, I'll do some extra wraps here, and then I'll just go and catch the Macau feather by the tips. Now rotate my lines and go backwards and now I'm getting the transition between yellow and gray. I need to reattach it in my fingers because the front barbule got loose a little bit and now when I get near the end I'll just hold it with my finger, go with my thread below now look what I'm doing it I'm pinching the thread here and then sliding it down my finger and not I'm not letting the pressure of the barbells now while I'm waiting for everything to, to I'm doing everything else sorry while I'm uh, cutting the tips wrapping the wire uh, I'm letting the threads to untwist so I can do the next step that's inserting the CDC into the dubbing loop or CDC loop in this case. So as you can see I got uh, bicolor, bicolor body and catch wire with two wraps, kill it, uh, break it, just two, three wraps and that's it. Now if you just let your thread hang it will tell you which way you have to spin it in order to split the thread. Usually it's counterclockwise, so you can f make it faster by just spinning the bobbin a little bit. And when you do that, like when you press your nail against the thread, it should flatten out a little bit. I did it exactly right. Now look at against the needle, it flattens it out. Now I'm gonna find the middle here. Sorry, I need to put the CDC. Don't put the whole feather for this. Use a half. Use half of it, even quarter if the the feather is bigger. And the longer fibers, put them towards the bobbin. Now I'll split the thread, preferably in equal halves. Like just in two this is not good you need like those strands to be equal strength it's good it's better now the, the thread is somehow tangled but never mind it's closed so I'll just use this one and then I'll insert my clip from paper clip or whatever this is Okay, spin the bobbin, help it, and now I'll wrap the wrap everything with my bobbin. Okay, now notice, oops, the stem is here, and notice what I'm doing here. Folding it backwards, folding it backwards, and stopping here. Now you can stop your fly here, loop finish, and it's done. But what I like to do is I like to add a little bit of dubbing. Just like before I said, just a couple of fibers, create a nice fine dubbing noodle, which will actually push the CDC backwards. Um, you don't have to push CDC with your hands, you can just slide the dubbing noodle down the bead like so, and it will actually place, place itself where it's supposed to be. I'll add some more dubbing, like super tiny amount, and Tiny amount is way better than the big amount, uh, as I said, because of the control, uh, because of the tightness, everything stays much better here, but you don't get those spikes around. 
like it's not spiky it's not as buggy as some people like it so if you want to get that bugginess effect use thicker noodle it's easier to brush out now one two three pull one two three pull now let's talk about ocd uh, for people who have ocd as i do sometimes i like to hide this knot so what i like to do is i take again small pinch of the dubbing well not as big as this just a small one you need to cover maybe one or two centimeters or the thread with your dubbing like so and the thinner the noodle the better like tighter the better and then place your whip finishing tool under the dubbed part and then just whip finish the knot as you would normally do and it will hide it will conceal your knot as you can see. Now let's talk about features of these flies. As you, you could see, if you watched my video that I made a month or two ago, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's called The Underwater World of Flies. I will link it somewhere around, up or right, whatever, um, left or right. Uh, you could see that CDC is way more mobile under the water than Partridge. Partridge behaves more like a wiry, springy thing. It's, it's definitely stiffer, you can feel it under your fingers, while the, the CDC is much softer uh, and it works, it moves, it gives life more under the water. So look like just, just this comparison, like I'll blow both flies at the same time from the same distance of course, so look about how they behave. Okay, let me place it above. So while the CDC mo is moving the whole length, the partridge is moving just the tips. So it's quite obvious which fly will give more life. Of course, uh, in faster currents, you can go away with partridge. In slower currents, you go, go away with CDC. So that's the main difference where you can use these. Um, so uh, at the same time you can use CDC for the flies you want to go lower in the water surface while the partridge will definitely sink faster than the CDC. CDC like if you're fishing the, the fly without a bead, uh, CDC can actually keep even a nymph hook on the surface for a while so, while the partridge will rarely, rarely do that and it's the surface uh, that CDC is uh, creating with these tiny little barbules and that creates a lot of surface tension and that's how actually the CDC floats it's not the oil um, so the reason why I would use CDC over the partridge's mobility and less depth needed so if I'm making a wet fly that I want to fish just under the surface or touching the film water film I would use CDC if I want to use like traditional wet fly of course I would use partridge or snipe or whatever bird that has soft hackle and that's more or less it mm. as I said previously you can use both techniques you can use the partridge hackle in the loop if for example you have only large hackle just place it in the clip make it shorter and then put it in the thread and create the length of the, of the hackle that you need as opposed to what you get uh, from the feather when you wrap it around the hook. So if you don't want to use the, the length of the partridge, put it in the thread between two, two thread uh, strands and clip it, Sh make it shorter. That's it. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe and see you next time.